Hey, Math 3-2. Today we're going to do part B of solving rational equations. This part, we're going to look at solving them by multiplying through by the lowest common denominator. All right. So if the rational equation has more than one term on either side, for example, 4 add 2 over x equals 6 add 3 over x, we're going to multiply each term on both sides of the equation by the lowest common denominator. So in this equation, there are four terms. One, two, three, four. We would multiply all four terms by the lowest common denominator. So this strategy has also been used in previous courses. So let's look at this example. It's right here, example five, part A. So let's do this. State the non-principal values and then solve the equation algebraically. So non-principal values. X cannot equal zero. All right, that's the only variable term we have in our denominator. So those are going to be our non-principal values. X can equal zero. Now I want to multiply every single term by the lowest common denominator. Well, the lowest common denominator is X. That's the only denominator here. So I take my first term multiplied by X. I'm going to take my second term, 2 over x, multiplied by x. Take my third term, 6, multiplied by x. And take my fourth term, 3 over x, and multiply it by x. So as long as I multiply every single term in the whole equation by the same value, I'm going to get the same equation. It's going to stay the same. It's going to stay balanced. Now I go ahead and simplify what I have here. 4 times x is 4x plus 2 times x divided by x, well, the x will cancel. I'm left with 2. Equals 6 times x plus 3 over x times x. Well, again, the x is reduced to 1, so I'm left with 3. So that's a pretty simple equation to solve. I've got no variables left in my denominator. In fact, I've got no denominators at all. So I'm going to minus 4x on both sides. I'm going to minus 3 from both sides. So on the left side, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. On the right side, 6x minus 4x is 2x. And I divide both sides by 2, and I get negative 1 half will equal x. I go back and look at my non missile values. The only non missile value I had was x can equal 0. So that would probably be a good solution if I were to go check on my calculator or if I check it algebraically. All right. Part B, state non principal values. Well, here, x cannot equal 1. And now I multiply everything by my common denominator. Well, there's only one denominator. That's x minus 1. So I multiply every term by x minus 1. So I take my first term, x, multiplied by x minus 1. I take my second term, 2 over x minus 1, and I multiply it by x minus 1. All right? So... Maybe I'll just write it with brackets. And that equals 4, and I multiply that term by x minus 1 as well. So you multiply every term by x minus 1. So my expand and simplify now. So x times x minus 1 is x squared minus x plus 2 over x minus 1 times x minus 1 over 1. Well, these x minus 1s are reduced down to 1, so I'm just left with 2. And on the right side of the equation, 4 times x minus 1 is 4x minus 4. Well, it's now a quadratic equation because I've got an x squared term. So I'm going to set the equation equal to 0. So I'm going to minus 4x from both sides. And I'm going to add 4 from both, add four to both sides. So on the left side of the equation, I get x squared. Negative x minus 4x is a minus 5x. And 2 minus 4 would be negative 2, but I'm supposed to add 4 to both sides, so 2 plus 4 is 6. So I've now got a simple trinomial on the left side of this quadratic equation. Factor it, what two numbers add to the middle term of negative 5, multiply to the last term of positive 6. Those numbers are minus 3 and minus 2. Once we're in this state, we let each factor equal 0. So x minus 3 can equal 0, or x minus 2 can equal 0. And we solve those simple equations. x would equal 3, or x would equal 2. So there are our solutions.
three or two. All right. Part C. State the non permissible values. Well, the non permissible values occur in the denominator where there are variables. So here, x can't equal negative 1. Here, x can't equal positive 1. So non permissible values are plus and minus 1. Now I want to multiply every term by the common denominator. Well, my common denominator is x plus 1 times x minus 1. So I take my first term, 3 over x plus 1 and I multiply it by x plus 1 times x minus 1. And to that, I'm going to add my second term, and I'm going to multiply that by x plus 1 times x minus 1. And that's going to equal 2 times my common denominator, which is x plus 1 times x minus 1. So I can now reduce any numerator to any denominator. So my x plus 1s will reduce down to 1. So I'm left with 3 times x minus 1 in my first term. Plus, here my x minus 1s will reduce down to 1. So my second term would be 1 times x plus 1 equals. And here I'm not reducing anything, so I'm just going to expand this out. 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 1. Well, that gives me a difference of squares of x squared minus 1. Right? x squared minus 1 plus 1 x squared minus 1x plus 1x minus 1. And the x's will cancel. So let's complete this simplification. 3 times x minus 1 is 3x minus 3. 1 times x plus 1 is x plus 1. And the right side we get 2x squared minus 2. This is a quadratic equation because I've got an x squared term. So I want to set the equation equal to 0. So I'm moving to the right side of the equation this time. So I've got 2x squared. Here, 3x plus x is 4x. I'm going to minus 4x from both sides then. And I've got a minus 3 plus 1, which is a minus 2 on the left. So I add 2 to the right. So plus 2 minus 2 is 0. Well, this is a nice easy one to factor. Um, 0 equals 2x squared minus 4x. Well, it's got a common factor of 2x. That leaves x minus 2. So I'm done factoring. I can now let each factor equal 0. So 2x could equal 0, or x minus 2 could equal 0. Solve the first equation. x could equal 0. Divide both sides by 2. Over here, I add 2 to both sides, or x could equal 2. Look up at our non-permissive values. X can't equal plus or minus 1. Well, 0 and 2 are not plus or minus 1. So those are good solutions. So X could equal 0 or X could equal 2. All right. One more example. Caitlin and Taylor were solving the rational equation. 4x minus 2 over 2x plus 3 equals 6x minus 1 over 3x plus 5. Caitlin used the method of least common denominators where she multiplies both terms by the lowest common denominator. Taylor used the method of cross multiplying. Their work has been started below. Let's look at Caitlin's work. She found the common denominator to be 2x plus 3 times 3x plus 5. So she took that common denominator, multiplied it by the first term. And she took that common denominator, multiplied it by the second term. And then she found out that 2x plus 3 reduced with 2x plus 3. So she had 5, 3x plus 5 times 4x minus 2 left. And she found out that on the, second, on the other side of the equation, 3x plus 5 would reduce with 3x plus 5. So she was left with 2x plus 3 times 6x minus 1. So Caitlin's done some nice work there. We look at Taylor's work, and when he cross multiplies, he gets 3x plus 5 times 4x minus 2 equals 2x plus 3 times 6x minus 1. What do we notice about each student's work? 
we notice that these are the same place. So it doesn't matter which method we do, we're going to get to the same place no matter what. Complete the work to determine the solution. Well, one thing Caitlin and Taylor both didn't do was state non-permissible values. All right. So the non-permissible values are going to be the same. We have to go look at our denominators. So 2x plus 3 can equal 0. So that means I'm going to minus 3 and divide by 2. So x can equal negative 3 halves. That's one non-permissible value. The other one, 3x plus 5 can't equal 0. So I'm going to minus 5 and divide by 3. So x can't equal negative 5 thirds. So they both should have had those for non-permissible values. So x cannot equal negative 3 halves or negative 5 thirds. So we should keep that in mind. And now we'll complete the student's work. So it doesn't matter which one I look at, we're going to have to expand both sets of binomials and combine like terms. So 3x times 4x is 12x squared minus 6x plus 20x minus 10 equals 2 times 6 is 12x squared. Uh, 2 times negative 1 is minus 2x, 3 times 6x is plus 18x, and 3 times negative 1 is a minus 3. So if I simplify the left-hand side of this equation, I get 12x squared, negative 6 plus 20 is a plus 14x, minus 10. On the right side, I get 12x squared, negative 2x plus 18x is a plus 16x, minus 3. All right. Now I notice there's a 12x squared on both sides of this equation. So if I minus 12x squared from both sides of the equation, it's gone. So I've got 14x minus 10 equals 16x minus 3. Well, now I want to get my variables on one side, so maybe I'm going to minus 14x from both sides and add 3 to both sides. All right, so negative 10 plus 3 is a negative 7. 16x minus 14x is 2x. And divide both sides by 2, and negative 7 has equals x. I look at my non-permissible values. Negative 7 halves looks fine. That's a good solution. I could check it algebraically or graphically. All right, note. This example shows that cross-multiplication is a form of using the lowest common denominator strategy. We're just saving some of the work. Recall that cross-multiplication can only be used if there is a single rational expression on each side of the equation. So in circumstances like this one, make sure you set, uh, make sure you move one, one rational expression to the side, and then you've got rational expressions on each side of the equation. All right? Great. So, one last question. Example 7. In order to determine the lowest common denominator of a set of rational expressions, it's essential that the denominators are written in simplest factored form. If the denominator is not in simplest factored form, as in the example below, we should factor first. Determine the roots of this rational equation. So step one, when you're dealing with rational expressions or rational equations, we should always start by factoring. So I've got 16 over x squared minus 4x. Well, I'm going to factor that denominator to be x times x minus 4. So I've got a common factor here of x equals 4 over x minus 4 minus 1 over x. So that's step 1 I should factor. Step 2, I can now state non-permissible values. x cannot equal here 0, here 4, here 4, already got it, and here 0, already have it. 
So I've stated my non-permissible values. Excellent. Now I want to multiply every term in this equation by the lowest common denominator. So what is the lowest common denominator? So let's figure out what that is. Lowest common denominator is, well, this denominator is x times x minus 4. Here's an x minus 4, and here's an x. So that's my lowest common denominator, x times x minus 4. Those are the only things in the denominator, so that's what I can multiply every single term by. So my first term is 16 over x times x minus 4. I'm going to multiply that by my lowest common denominator. All right. So I'm going to multiply that by x times x minus 4. All right. So I'll multiply that by, and I can put it over 1 if I want. Equals 4 over x minus 4 multiplied by my lowest common denominator, which is x times x minus 4 over 1 minus 1 over x times my lowest common denominator, which is x times x minus 4 over 1. So remember, we're multiplying each of those situations. All right. Now I can go ahead and reduce any numerator with any denominator. So I see an x divided by an x, they reduce to 1. I see an x minus 4 divided by an x minus 4, they reduce to 1. So this first term is going to be 16 times 1 times 1 over 1 times 1 times 1. So the first term is going to be 16 equals. Second term, I see an x minus 4, divide that by x minus 4. They both reduce to 1. So I'm left with 4 times x over 1 times 1, so that's just 4x. And the last term, I notice these x will reduce down to 1. So I'm left with negative 1 times x minus 4 all over 1. So there's my expression, sorry, my equation without any denominators. So let's multiply through by this negative 1 to get rid of the brackets. Negative 1 times x and negative 1 times negative 4. Combine like terms, I've got 16 is equal to 4x minus 1x is 3x. Add 4 minus 4 from both sides. 16 minus 4 is 12. That equals 3x. Divide both sides by 3. x is 4. Now, if I look at this, and I look at my restrictions, x is not allowed to equal 4. That's one of my restrictions. So we call this an extraneous root. And we would say that this equation has no solutions. So therefore, no solutions because the only solution we came up with is extraneous. We're not allowed to have x equals 4 based on our non-permissible values. All right. Great. So you guys can now try some of the questions from 6 through 12. Well done.